In this video, you will see the unique preservation of the ancient Egyptian food, which is more than 2000 years old. Learn more about ancient horses and see the most ancient example of ancient art. And even that is not all. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. Horse in Antiquity Geneticists have confirmed the theory of archaeologists that the horse was domesticated in the Black Sea region 4,000 years ago. Russian and French scientists found that the domestication of horses began relatively recently, at the end of the 2nd millennium BC, that is many thousand years later than all other animals that were tamed by ancient people. The dog became the first friend of Homo sapiens, even in the late Paleolithic era it guarded the owner's dwelling, helped him drive the prey during the hunt, and accompanied him everywhere during the migration. The bones of a domestic dog were found in many places in various archaeological sites in the beginning of the Holocene era, about 10,000 years ago. After another 6,000 six years, men managed to domesticate cows, goats, sheep and pigs, which significantly changed the life of ancient people. At the end of the second millennium BC, bones of other animals with clear signs of domestication appear in large quantities in the monuments of the Sintashta culture. Actually, the very presence of chariots in the Sintashta culture directly suggests why they used horses. The domestication of a horse opened a completely new page in the life of an ancient man. Having settled it, he ascended above his own kind and felt the strength and power that turned him into a warrior and allowed him to overcome thousands of kilometers in a relatively short time, to master new unknown territories, to come into contact with local cultures and civilizations. Human settlement has accelerated noticeably. In other words, the horse lifted the man off the ground, gave him a sense of freedom, strength and a sense of flight. The horse is still little more than just a vehicle or a weapon of war. This is a way of life and a special status of a rider. Ritual Burial of a Horse Archaeologists exhumated the remains of a horse buried in a stone tomb in western Armenia and found that an adult breeding horse, 17-19 years old, was buried for ritual purposes. This happened in the 4th first centuries BC during the reign of the Orontids. According to scientists, the find is the only ritual burial of a horse known in the Caucasus. The most valuable breed of antiquity bred around the 6th century BC were the Nicene horses, which were bred mainly in Media. Many Many ancient authors, including Herodotus and Strabo, mentioned them as tall and slender horses used in particular in the army of the Persian king Xerxes. Owning such horses remained an honor even in the Hellenistic period. Thus, Alexander the Great, who conquered Persia, demanded Nicene horses as a tribute. Archaeologists have discovered a round-shaped mound with a height of about 1 meter and a diameter of 14 meters. The walls of the burial were made of large basal stones. In the construction oval chamber measuring one and a half by two and a half meters, there were the remains of a horse with bent limbs. In the mouth of an animal, a metal ring was located between the incisors and molars of the lower jaw. No other grave goods were found. Archaeologists came to the conclusion that this is the only ritual burial of a separate horse of the Nicene breed known in the Caucasus. A metal ring inserted into the lower jaw indicates that the horse was a breeding horse. Floors in the Neolithic era Human beings have lived in Lebanon for approximately 1,700,000 years. Who lived here at the very beginning, science does not know. They find some kind of tools, sites, but the bones, alas, are not there. The very first and incomprehensible to us human beings are scientifically called proto-people. More or less significant and understandable finds have been obtained by archaeologists since the mark of about 100,000 years ago. By the way, over 400 sites of ancient people have already been found in Lebanon, and it is known for sure that there was a period when both sapiens and Neanderthals lived here at the same time. Some migrated from Europe to Africa, others in the opposite direction, met in Lebanon and lived here. The Neolithic period in Lebanon began somewhere in the 10th millennium BC, people at this time already beginning to build houses for themselves, and several of these houses have been found in different parts of the country. One of these areas in the city of Biblos, it is officially called Jebel. This city is the oldest permanently inhabited city in the world. It is at least 8,000 years old, although there are finds on its territory dating back to earlier times. They were buried at that time in such huge jugs. They found 250 pieces. This one is on display in a museum in Beirut. 
This is a place where the ancient cemetery was. If you look closely, then in this frame, you can see some scattered stones and on the left side of the image, some light stone fragment. These are the remains of a house that is about 8000 years old or even more. It is floor. Here is another such floor. You can even stand on it feel like a Stone Age man. The houses, by the way, were, were small. Here is an explanatory inscription in three languages. They write that this is a limestone floor of the Neolithic period. It is a pity that they were not properly preserved. I suspect that the most valuable and preserved samples were transferred to the storerooms of museums. The Beirut History Museum, which is just under construction, will exhibit the oldest residential building found in the city during the construction of the tunnel. The house is 11,000 years old. The Lost Library of the Moscow Tsars The Library of the Moscow Tsars allegedly contained an extensive collection of Greek texts dating from ancient times, as well as texts written in many other languages. The rulers of the Grand Duchy of Moscow allegedly built a library, which by the 16th century had become a major institution. There are claims that Ivan IV, better known as Ivan the Terrible, who lived from 1530 to 1584, somehow managed to hide the library's tax. Many attempts have been made over the centuries to find this hidden library, but until now the secrets have come empty-handed. Whether this hidden library existed or not, a number of ancient texts written in Greek and other languages are in the archives of Moscow and St. Petersburg. Amphitheater and the Skeleton of the Cat Maxippus British archaeologists have examined the remains of Roman buildings at Richborough in eastern Kent. In general, Kent is the first place in Britain where the, where the Roman soldiers set foot. Even before the main conquest, during the campaigns of Julius Caesar in 55 and 54 BC. This year, archaeologists said they have found an amphitheater with a capacity of approximately 5,000 spectators. The outer wall, up to 6 meters thick, is made of laid turf, while the inner wall around the arena is made of locally mined chalk blocks. Traces of paint remained on top of the plaster, vertical and horizontal lines in red, yellow, black and blue. Perhaps they originally contained scenes of what was happening in the arena of the amphitheater. Gladiator fights with each other against wild animals as well as executions. This is a very rare find. None of the amphitheaters found in Britain have traces of wall painting. On the outskirts of the settlement, a buried skeleton of a domestic cat was discovered, which archaeologists nicknamed Maxippus. What is unusual? Cats in ancient Rome were not the most common pets, although the Romans, having conquered Egypt, cancelled the ban on their export from this country. But it's one thing, a cat in Rome itself, and quite another in distant Britain. A cat in such a place is a sign that settlement is firstly peaceful and secondly rich, therefore people who have the opportunity to keep a rare animal settle in it. By the way, the whole skeleton of a cat of that time is generally a rather rare find. Often they became victims of predators, but the skeleton of Maxippus rather indicates that he was buried, covered so that no one would disturb the bones. The oldest piece of art A team of researchers from Bournemouth University and Guangzhou University discovered five handprints and five footprints at Kisan on the Tibetan plateau, dating from 169 to 226,000 years ago in the middle of the Ice Age. The prints are preserved in freshwater limestone deposited around a hot spring known as Travertine. Based on the size of the prints, analyzes show that they were neatly placed by children between the ages of 7 and 12. The dating of the prints was carried out using a radiometric method based on the decay of uranium found in Travertine, which indicates the earliest settlement of hominins on the Tibetan plateau. The prints were not left by normal walking and were probably deliberately left in what may have been the earliest example of stationary or periodal art we have found to date. You can imagine these children playing in the mud by a hot spring carefully placing their hands and feet where they have been stored for thousands of years so that we can find them, just like a child today can do in cement. This mud-like clay hardened into travertine, which froze those playful hands and footprints in time. Unique preservation of the ancient Egyptian fetus the fetus found in a mummified Egyptian woman has survived more than 2,000 years later due to an unusual decomposition process. In April 2021, we learned about the first case of pregnancy of an ancient Egyptian mummy that has survived to this day. 
Previously, it was believed that the mummy, which is in the National Museum in Warsaw, is the remains of the priest or Jehadi. Closer examination using tomographic images revealed that it was a woman in her 20s and 30s. At the time of her death, she was 26, 30 weeks pregnant. The deceased was covered with natron to dry the body. Natron is a natural mixture of sodium decahydrate and about 17% sodium bicarbonate along with small amounts of sodium chloride and sodium sulfate. During the process, the fetus was still in the uterus and in fact began to pickle in an acidic environment. Formic acid and other compounds formed after death in the uterus as a result of various chemical processes associated with the composition changed the pH in the woman's body. The transition from an alkaline to an acidic environment caused the minerals to be washed out from the bones of the fetus, which began to dry out and mineralize. According to researchers, the process of Egyptian mummification from a chemical point of view is a process of tissue mineralization that can persist for thousands of years. These two processes explain to us why we hardly see fetal bones on computed tomography. We can see hands or feet, but these are not bones, but dried tissue. Only the skull is partially preserved. Sarcophagus of Menkori The pyramid of the Egyptian pharaoh Menkori is the smallest of the three pyramids built at Giza about 4,500 years ago. In the 1830s, English military officer Howard Weiss explored the pyramids of Giza, sometimes using destructive methods to get through the structures. Among his discoveries at Giza was an ornate sarcophagus found in the Menkori pyramid, which Weiss tried to ship to England in 1838 aboard the merchant ship Beatrice. The Beatrice sank during her voyage, taking with her an ornate sarcophagus. If Beatrice is ever found, it may be possible to return the sarcophagus as well. A hug of 1500 years Is eternal love possible? Yes, say Chinese anthropologists. An ancient cemetery was recently discovered during construction in Shaanxi province. The work was suspended to begin archaeological excavations, during which several hundred human burials became available for research. Among all the graves, one grave attracted the attention of scientists. It contained not one, but two bodies at once, and intertwined in a close embrace. By examining the teeth, anthropologists were able to establish that some of the remains belonged to a man, others to a woman. At the time of his death, he was approximately 29 to 35 years old. His height was 161 and a half centimeters. The lady was a little older, from 35 to 40 years old, and a little shorter, 157 centimeters. We also found out that he survived more than one injury, had a broken arm and heel spurs. The phalanx of one of the fingers was missing. The woman's only health problem was tooth decay, but it of course could not lead to death. Having carefully studied the bones of the deceased, scientists conclude that the man died as a result of his injuries. The woman could not die a natural death, since she did not have any serious illnesses. She probably committed suicide in order to stay with her beloved forever. So they lay for 1500 years. According to historians, it was at this time that belief in eternal love spread in the country. Feelings were not hidden. On the contrary, the manifestations were encouraged. Suicide, if his goal was to forever remain with his chosen one, was not censured. This was considered commendable. However, this was a rare occurrence. On the territory of China, such graves have never been found in which two lovers would sleep eternally. Tomb of a girl in a royal robe Archaeologists have discovered in Kazakhstan the burial place of a girl who was dressed in royal clothes. The tomb may be 1,500 years old. It is noted that the grave was plundered, but not gold jewelry was stolen from it, but the skull of the deceased. The girl most likely died in the 5th-6th centuries AD. Archaeologists suggest that the deceased belonged to the elite of a certain nomadic tribe. The burial was found on the Mangishlak Peninsula, where a large number of remains dating back to the first six centuries were found. In total, archaeologists found 64 gold plaques in the burial, which had a diameter of 12-14 mm, several masks depicting human faces, embossed gold plates of two shoe belts, as well as the tips of the plaques. In addition, other artifacts were found, a part of a bronze mirror, many beads, and a dark tip. Jewelry that is 9,000 years old This find was made in the south of modern Jordan. 
Archaeologists managed to find the burial of the child, which contained the necklace. Not all of the beads have survived. Some of them were replaced by the restorers with new ones, to restore the integrity of the product of the ancient craftsmen. New beads are black. Usually scientific restoration deliberately makes the missing pieces from a different material and different color. Thus, after many, many years, it will still be possible to immediately say for sure which piece is genuine and which is just an imitation in the remake. There were more than 2,580 beads in the necklace. The restoration work lasted two whole years. Specialists from Nice and Stuttgart worked on the restoration. At the end of the work, the repaired beautiful thing was transferred to the Petra Museum. The child who owned this jewelry was eight or nine years old. Most likely the child was a girl. Since 2019, the museum has also hosted a reconstruction of this burial. Finds made during her excavations are also exhibited there. Find of Czech archaeologists The Czech Republic is located in the center of Europe. Trade routes have long passed through it, armies marched along it, and it is not surprising that ancient treasures are found here every now and then. The find in question was made back in 2020, but only in November last year, after detailed analysis using X-rays, spectrometry, and other methods, scientists told reporters about it. An archaeological expedition conducted excavation near the town of Rakovnik. It is about 50 kilometers west of Prague. Unique jewelry was found here, created over 1,500 years ago. Judging by the quality of the work and the materials used, they could have belonged to the representatives of the highest aristocracy of that time. Experts do not yet say where exactly the unique treasure was found, since large-scale excavations have not yet been completed. But we can definitely say that the find is associated with the era of the great nation's migration. In the 5th century AD, there were no states on the territory of modern Czech Republic. Therefore, it is impossible to say to whom the found jewelry belonged. Perhaps this is part of the war spoil, which was buried in order to return for it. But the gold buckle and ring weighing over 150 grams are richly decorated with precious stones. These are Czech garnets, Indian almondines. Pomegranate is still considered one of the symbols of the Czech Republic, and many tourists always go to the store for it when they come to Prague and other Czech cities. But it is also interesting that today these are the oldest processed pomegranates found in the territory of the Czech Republic. And this elevates the find to the rank of an artifact of special historical, artistic and cultural value. According to archaeologists, finds of such treasures in Europe can be counted on the fingers of one hand. The working hypothesis so far is that these decorations were made not in Bohemia, but on the territory of the Roman Empire, in Italian Ravenna or Byzantine Constantinople. Rate this video with a thumb up and subscribe to the channel. I will definitely answer every kind comment. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!